Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger, and today we're going to be taking a first look and an unboxing of the new Alienware Steam Machine. I was contacted by them to see if I was interested in this product, and of course I was because it's gaming, and of, of course outside of you know my normal League of Legends gaming, I just play games in general. So I thought I would take a look at this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab it, which is right here in the box, all still sealed up. We're gonna go ahead and open it and see what the contents are inside for our, uh, the beginning. We'll start with this unboxing. So the first thing, obviously, we need to get it out of this actually quite awesome box, honestly. It's quite big. It, makes, it feels beefy, too, which is always a good thing. Um, I think the first part just slides right off. Yes, it does. It does indeed slide straight off. Now, we get this pretty box. We get the Alienware logo, and it appears that this will then flip out. And open. Woo! We'll slide that out of the way a little bit. We have a guide, a startup guide, with all of the controller configurations on it. It'll say whether it has the, uh, if you're starting with the Steam controller, which this has in it, or if you're going to be using an Xbox 360 controller. Um, the machine does work with the Steam controller. That is what it is boxed with. And then I know you can use 360 controllers and you can use um, Xbox One controllers as well. So that is another thing you can use if you want to team up more controllers because this console will use multiples. You can multiplayer game on it. The first thing we'll pull out of the box, let's pull this out. This is foam in the shape of the controller because below it, as we pull it out, is in fact the Steam controller. This is what it looks like. Ooh, it's got the double clicky buttons on the back. I've been looking into this controller a little bit before it came out, but I haven't had my hands on it yet. So um, we're going to talk about this a little bit more because we know that this is a very special controller because these touch, touch and click, I believe. Yes, they, they're touch pads and they click and they, they're very interesting. We'll talk about this more in a second. Um, it also comes with batteries as well. And then it appears that we have a cord for the controller. If we need that, it is wireless control. And then we have another black. I don't actually know what this is. It does have a USB port and it appears to have a mini USB on the back, which I believe is exactly what this is. So I don't know if it's a weird converter you can use for something. We'll look into that too. We'll see if we can figure out what that may or may not be. Um, packet of silicone gel, silica gel. And then we have cable. What is this? You are an HDMI cable, so HDMI cable included. And then I believe, yes it is, we have a power cable and a power brick. So those will go together and that is what will be powering the system into the wall. So that is good to have. You obviously need that. So that comes. And then of course in the middle of it all we have the box itself, which is wrapped up in a piece of plastic. Let's go ahead and pull that out. There it is. And we'll put the box off to the side because that is what is all in the box. Now here we have the machine itself. Um, First thing you might notice about it is it's very, very shiny, as you can see League of Legends in the background being reflected off the computer screen. But it's it's a, it's a very small package. It is not too big. Just to give you a, a comparison, here's the controller next to the machine. So um, it's pretty it's it's pretty small, so it can be put pretty much anywhere, which is nice. But we're thinking the living room because we're going to bridge the gap between um, gaming at your PC and console game. We're bridging that gap with the Steam machine. That's kind of kind of the bread and butter, some would say. So small console, we got a couple USB ports in the front. We have a power button on the alien's face. And then we have on the back, we have a power input. We have HDMI in, HDMI out. We have audio for um, optical audio. We have a ethernet cable. And we also have two more USB ports on the back. And obviously, ventilation will come out the back as well. We have vents on the bottom. This machine's configuration is the i3. It's a fourth generation Intel chipset. It's the i3. I believe it runs at 2.9 gigahertz. And then it is equipped with a one terabyte hard drive and eight gigs of RAM. So just to give you a little basis of some of the technical specs underneath. And then it has a special, I can't want to say special, but it's got a version of the, um, a GTX of some kind inside of it for graphics. And all of them run the same graphics. You can get configurations of the machine with an i3, an i5, or an i7, and anywhere from 500 to, um, gigabytes to 1,000 gigabytes, which is a terabyte. And then it can come with a four gigabyte configuration of RAM or eight. So we have eight, and we have a terabyte, and we're at the we have the one 
uh, or the 2.9 gigahertz processor i3 from Intel. So that is the box itself. Now, let's take a little bit closer look at some of it. So at this point, I've set up my machine. I've got it all plugged in and all set up and ready to go. I have toyed around with it just a little bit, but let's go ahead and take a look at the interface and see how all of it works within the Steam OS because this is what makes each of, um, this is what makes it unique really. So this is what makes it the Steam machine. So what we have is we have, obviously we're up at the top and we have some notifications. We can go to music, download some settings and our power settings and if we have any new alerts. Then we have this bar where we control things like our library, there's the store and the community and then we can go over and we can take a look with right bumper over to our chat and see who's around. Oh, and then if we hit the left bumper, we slide all the way to the left across the screen to the web. And of course you can open up the web and you can surf it um, just like normal. Now the first thing or one of the things people might be interested in is how that runs and how that works. So let's just open up a tab with Google. And one thing is we're, we are using the Steam controller. Um, this is my right thumb on that pad and my left thumb on this pad. So if you want to go to a specific site, all you'd have to do is type in um, what you wanted to do. So let's just say you wanted to go to YouTube, you had, well, it already wants, knows where I want to go, but you just click as your thumbs get there. So um, it does take a second to kind of get used to how this works, but it is pretty responsive and it does work fairly well. So there you can see I have a mouse and my right thumb is doing verticals up and down and then my right, or yeah, my left thumb does up and down and then my right does the moving around. So if we wanted to go to YouTube, we just slide over to it and we click on it and it would take us probably straight to YouTube if I can actually click it. So um, that's how it works in its simplest form. Now if we want to go back, we can just hit the Steam button on the top of the controller. It'll take us straight back. We can jump back to using our joystick and we can browse things. Now I have downloaded a few games because I have, you know, plugged this in. The first thing I was like, well, I need to download a few games first so we can see how everything works. And I wanted to learn more about this Steam OS too. So let's go to our library. We own 120 games, um, but you can break things down and filter them out because with the Steam OS, not every game will run on this machine. So for instance, here's Alan Wake, but this does not currently run on the Steam OS. So I could stream this game to my living room from my PC um, and that's the way you would be able to play it. So you will be able to stream across if you want to play something that your computer um, is either built up for or if it's not supported from the Steam OS. Now, if you want to find out what does work for your console, you can go ahead and narrow your search. So let's narrow it to the Steam OS games. Let's see what works. So now these are games that will run on the Steam machine itself with the Steam OS. That's taken things down to 54 titles from our 120. So we have games in here, City Skylines, Bioshock Infinite. We got Amnesia, Besiege, K-Story, a bunch of Counter-Strike, uh, Half-Life, Killing Floor, Left 4 Dead 2. We got the Portals, Reassembly, Risk of Rain. And we have Civ 5, and we have Starbound, and Terraria, and some others. So these are games that will work live on this machine. This machine will run all of these titles. Now, as we hover over these, here for instance is um, Jotun. It is saying right there that it will run with the Steam controller or a controller in general. So if we click that, it's saying this game's good to go. Now this game we don't have installed but no worries, but it'll run with the controller. Now, if we wanna break things down again, we can go over to the filters tab. We can select another one, either installed locally or controller supported. So if we have direct controller supported games, we can click that and that takes things down a little bit more, obviously, as to 14 games that are directly supported with a controller. That means you'll launch the game, it's good to go. It knows the controller and how it'll be set up and how it'll play and how it'll go. So we're all fine and dandy there. Um, now, if it isn't controller supported, but let's go ahead and switch things to just install. This will cut it down really far because I haven't installed tons of things. So if it's not controller supported, like City Skylines, that doesn't mean you can't play it with a controller. You'll just simply have to configure it the way you want, which luckily with the way things are run on the Steam machine, there are plenty of options for using controller setup. So I've decided to launch the game City Skylines and I'm going to be playing it with the Steam controller. Now this game calls for a mouse and keyboard, but we can hit start 
No, we don't want to hit start. I have lied. I didn't actually mean start. Let's just close that real quick. What I meant to hit is the Steam button, which then we can go to controller configuration or configure controller. So here within the settings of any game, you can go ahead and set up the controller however you'd like it. Um, there's lots of different ways to do this. There's personal setups that you can save and make. There's also community setups which you can run for certain titles. It'll let you know what it works best for. Like here's Eli's City Skyline Steam Controller Map. So really, really simple, really, really effective most likely. Um, and people can share their configurations. There's also templates for gamepad, camera aim, WASD mouse and keyboard that will work for the controller. And there's recommended ones. So the official City Skylines bindings, which is recommended and that's what we have set up. So if we just go ahead and jump back into the game, we have our thumb on the right stick. We're gonna go ahead and select, let's select a new game. And let's go ahead and, you know, we just use our right thumb to figure out what we want. Let's do two rivers. And let's go ahead and start things up. So we've just launched into our new game. It just finished loading. And we're gonna go ahead and, and close the hello notification. I gotta get used to the buttons a little bit. All right, so we're in here. Our uh, thumb stick moves us around the map. We can zoom in and out with the triggers. Um, so we have all that control. So it really, if you click to, if you s click the, the mouse, it can give you the spinning and the angle. I just have it clicked and I'm just using my thumb to move however I'd want. So let's get that angle. And then we can build some roads, shall we? We shall. So we can go ahead and click on the roads, pop those up. Our, uh, our right click or our click what our mouse would be is just the uh, right bumper. It's pretty simple. We can go ahead and click. Whoop. Click, and then we can drag out where we want our road. Where do we want our road? I like a nice, longish road. Put that right there. That way we can get people in here. And then the left bumper simply unclicks things. We can build different types of roads. We'll go ahead and close that though, because we know how to build roads. But you can see just right off the bat, you know, how you just work around. It's basically that touchable, that touch button works as a really nice thumbstick, you could say. So. We have different zoning options for this game. Of course, we can also just move back around. What do we want to do? We want to put up a little bit of residential. So we just hover where we want it. And we can just simply click and drag in some residential. Let's just a big block of res. Boom. So people move in there, and that'll be a fine and dandy. Obviously, though, in this game, we're going to need more than just that. We're going to go ahead and see what we need for our electricity grid, which we definitely need. Where is it windy? Is it windy anywhere on this map? Can we do solar power? Not solar power, can we do some wind power? Maybe we come down here, grab a wind turbine, select that bad boy, boom, here's the wind map. Some expensive stuff. We're gonna actually put this right behind these people's house and boom, easy money. And they're all selected and they're all connected to that grid. The only next thing they'll definitely probably want is some running water. It's always important to have. So um, you can just see how simple it works. Um, water tower, why not? Let's go ahead and get them some agua or flavor. Um, we need to put this. I think we can put this anywhere, honestly. Boom, water. Nailed it. We'll set up pipes in just a second. But that's how it works up front. You just use your controller. You just have everything you ever wanted with, uh, if you want to sit on your couch and play a game that needed a mouse and keyboard, and check our region map. We have this area, and of course, if we, we can uh, get future ones in the future when we build more. So that's just how it works off the bat. Now, this is a game that obviously usually would be required with a, um, a mouse and keyboard, but with the Steam controller, we don't need that. But we can if we still want it, so that's still always an option. So I've decided to launch up some Bioshock Infinite to see how it runs on the machine and to see how the controller reacts and it's a little bit I'm gonna just say the word strange at first. It's just so different not using a thumbstick um, and using a touchpad um, It seems a little bit jerky at first when you start and uh, I mean, I guess you could say it kind of is but It's it's I mean it works. It's just it's just definitely different it's just got a weird feel. It kind of like has a, you can change these too. So if, if it's not to your liking, you can change how the acceleration feel of it is to yourself, make it more sensitive, less sensitive, make it so it reacts differently to your hand. Um, I'm kind of sticking with the way that it's just naturally recognizing it because that is the way um, it's just set up. I'm not messing with it currently in this game because this game is controller recognized 
And, uh, I mean, it's working fine, and everything seems to seems to be doing fine. It's just, it's just a little bit different. I will say, I did also, um, in a different first-person game, decided to try an Xbox controller, and I did like that. Um, it's just, if you're used to that, and you have one, that would be um, the way you'd want to go, maybe, if you're just more used to it. the thumbstick. Obviously, you give, give the Steam controller a shot, though, for your FPS. But I can see the value of the, uh, the, the touchpad sensitivity for all games that utilize the idea that you're using a mouse still. So, um, it definitely works quite well. It's very weird. It's just different. Nobody, you've never, you've never, trust me, you've never felt anything quite like it. Um, so, that's something you just need to try out for yourself the first time you're going to be using that Steam controller. Now, if we jump back to the store and we take a look at the store, there's a couple things I feel like we should be talking about and bringing up, or at least something I feel like I should talk about. So we have our featured, we got our popular new releases, we have top sellers, we can explore, we have a wish list, we have games, we have videos. Um, you can do all types of stuff. It's just how it works. It's kind of neat. So the one thing that we need to talk about is, so we saw within my games that out of the 120, 54 of them will run on the uh, Steam OS that comes with the Steam machine. But that still leaves out a few games that aren't. And that's not worrisome because the Steam library is quite huge. There's 4,500 plus titles in the Steam library. There's quite a lot of games. There might even be more than that. But there's a lot of games in the Steam library. But within that library of games, the Steam OS currently, which they're saying they'll be improving upon and adding more titles to it, but they're saying right now there's 1,200, a little over 1,200 games that will run on Steam platform machines. Now the reason for this is because the Steam platform runs on Linux, so it needs to be a game that is compatible with Linux specifically. Now the only thing I want to point out is, in no way is that Alienware's issue, so don't, don't if you're like, well, great, that's fun. No, that's not what's going on. It's, it's Valve deciding that the Steam OS will be Linux based and that's how that works and that's why there's only 1200 games and that's why half of my games in my library won't run on the machine granted yes I can stream them over a good feature to have if you'd like to stream them over obviously with streaming you'll have a little bit of um, a little bit of latency depending on what it is you're playing probably won't be noticeable in some games probably will be noticeable in other games depending on how the game's set up and how it runs and the other thing I want to bring up is there's another thing that Alienware themselves currently packaged and you can buy it it's called the Alienware Alpha, and it doesn't come with the Steam controller. It only comes with an Xbox 360 controller, but the Alienware Alpha is spec'd out about the exact same, and it comes with a Windows 8.1, I believe, which means you can run Steam Big Picture, which is kind of essentially all that the OS kind of is, and that means you can run all games that are Windows compatible, which would be the whole... Um, it'd just be everything within Steam. So that'd be 4,500 games right off the bat. And then you would also have access to games outside of Steam. So it's just something to think about. Um, it's essentially just a fully functioning mobile console PC at that point, um, if you want to look at it that way. So I think that's just an interesting thing to maybe remember. So like I said, if I go to my library, and if we go back to that filters tab, and we take a look at all my games, 120, and then we go Steam OS games. Like I said, we're cut down by less than half already to 54. So it's something you might want to consider or just think about. But if you're, if you're not worried about it and you want to stream things over, it will do that handily. So no worries there if you want to stream those games over. And uh, yeah, it's just something to think about. And it's something I think is interesting. Um, like I said, they will be expanding is what they've said. So we can expect to see more expansion in the future. But overall, it's very small, very tight package put together. And honestly, it's it's kind of nice. If you wanted to bridge that gap, be able to play games you have with on Steam, but you want to bring them to your living room, you want to play them multiplayer with controllers because some games are definitely more set up for that. And you can't really do that with a mouse and keyboard. You want to play, they have a big party playing Awesome Knots or something else, you can totally do that. So there are some nice benefits to uh, being able to have a machine like that in your living room. Um, and you have the full library of your games from Steam available to either play or stream across. So there are things you can do with it for sure. Also, you'll still be able to do the modded games thing. You can use any of those PC perifs that I did mention as well. And um, you can stream like across. So 
and directly from um, your computer in your home. So if you want to sit on the couch and play some uh, some Dota, no, you're not gonna play Dota. I lied. Nobody's gonna play Dota. Um, but if you want to play some Half Life or you want to play some Civilization where you normally would be sitting at your computer. Um, then the uh, Steam Machine might be something you might want to check out for sure. If you have any questions for me about the Steam Machine by Alienware, or any questions about this new Nifty controller, leave me a comment down below. I will have a video next month with some goodies for you guys about um, the Steam Machine and some other stuff. So look forward to that, and we'll get everybody hooked up with that. So hopefully you enjoyed this first look. Like I said, leave me any questions you have down below, and I'll see you all later.